Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Energy News Beat Daily Stand Up. My name is Stu Turley, President and CEO of the Sandstone Group. I'm just really excited to be here, and today is Monday. Sorry it's a Monday, but it is uh, July 31st, and I've got an action-packed show for you. Michael's out on assignment, and uh, we're talking about Iran to pursue rights over disputed gas field, according to their state media. All right, are you going to believe that? So uh, the next one coming around the corner is a silent threat to the energy transition, America's broken infrastructure policy. If you like fossil fuel or you hate fossil fuel or you like renewable or you hate renewable, it's we have an energy problem. Doesn't matter which side. Uh, I thought this was kind of funny. It's really a short article. Forget California, Texas is clean, uh, king of clean uh, energy. Thought that was pretty funny. Uh, we also have another one here. This one is a really good article from uh, Andrew Korbacha, and he is a Substack author, and uh, it's titled Explaining China's and India's Reported Differences Over the Expanding BRICS. BRICS is really turning out to be a incredible um, financial boon for, and trade for all of those members and not so good for the U.S. Another one coming around the corner is we have fishermen activists protest offshore wind farms near uh, mon uh, site recent whale deaths. You know, I've been harping on this, and if you're a uh, renewable and you believe in climate change, you also believe in, should believe in taking care of the planet and having the least amount of impact on the environment. So we're going to have that little bit of a discussion. And uh, in order to meet all of the climate demands and uh, goals around the world, this is kind of a oxymoron. Uh, U.S. must double LNG exports to cut emission and reduce global coal use. So we have a little bit of an ESG, a lot of oil and gas, and some really good um, geopolitical stuff today. Now, with that, I would like to thank all of our fans that are listening out there. Great feedback. Like to give a shout out to uh, Black Mountain Oil. Uh, and uh, great job having such a great list of uh, energy influencers. And uh, I mean, we had David Blackman, we had Alex uh, Epstein, we had uh, RT Ray uh, Trevino with the Crude Truth, and uh, I made it to number nine. And I am even lucky to be in the top 100, let alone on that list. So thank you guys very much. First article, Iran to pursue rights over disputed gas field in the state, according to their state uh, media. Um, their Iran uh, media minister would pursue its rights uh, in a disputed natural gas field also claimed by Saudi Arabia and Kuwait. If anybody remembers Baghdad, Bob, uh, we might have to call this one uh, IR guy of the week. Iran will pursue its rights and interest regarding exploitation and exploration of the field. If there is no desire for understanding and cooperation, it's kind of like the field is right next um, in there and uh, Kuwait and Saudi Arabia who share some maritime gas and oil uh, resources last year signed an agreement to jointly develop the fields despite objections from Iran, which they say it's illegal. The dispute goes back as far as the 1960s, uh, when Iran and Kuwait each awarded an off-shell concession, one to the Anglo-Iranian oil company, the forerunner to BP, and one to Shell. So uh, it's kind of interesting. Um, natural gas is the key. They want natural gas. So here's the next one that's coming around the corner. And this is not just about fossil. It's not just about renewable energy. It's about 
energy, a silent threat to the energy transition, America's broken infrastructure policy. Here's some numbers in this article. Um, the Inflation Reduction Act was really a big win for America's infrastructure and energy future. That is a misleading statement as it had very little for the infrastructure and a lot for the renewable uh, wind, solar, and storage. Here's the gotcha. At the end of 2022, there are over 10,000 projects, most of them wind, solar, and batteries, waiting for permission to connect to the grid, up from 8,100 the year before, according to researchers at Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. Backlog projects sitting in the queue represented 1,300 gigawatts of solar, wind, and battery. This is just nuts. If anybody understands physics, you have to be able to balance out the demands of electricity by having intermittent renewable and then balance it with online energy. This is one thing to get the wind the solar parks built, and then you got to connect them. But there is a backlog just to get them connected or approved. Uh, the Inflation Reduction Act included hundreds of billions of dollars for sol solar panels. And um, But if they can build new transmission lines at a faster, around 80% of the emission reductions expected from that bill, might not happen. So, you know, it's one thing to print money. It's another to want to go to renewable. It's another to sit there and say, we want to have total uh, guaranteed electricity and have it at low cost. You cannot have all of your cake and eat it too, because you won't even be able to bake the cake. Um, some more sobering statistics, um, interconnection roughly equals the install capacity of the entire U.S. Uh, power plant fleet, and just 21%, 14% of the capacity seeking connection from 2000 to 2017 has been built at the end of 2022. That's just nuts. Um, we cannot, we can print money, we can build the infrastructure for the wind farm and the solar farm, but we don't have the business processes to hook them to the grid. The U.S. has billions. Uh, good luck for, uh, plugging them in. Um, anyway, this one is... Um, really ugly. I got to tell you this one, though. The next article is forget California. Texas is the king of uh, clean energy. I got really tickled at this. It's only about a paragraph long. Um, in Texas, solar permitting is uncomplicated. Connecting projects to the grid is straightforward. Then there's cheap labor, homegrown energy expertise, and plenty of sunshine. This is actually why Texas has passed California, why Texas is leading uh, the country, because we can get projects put through. I'm glad to say and proud to say I'm a Texan, and uh, that really goes right on in line with the other article on why the East and West Coast and any of the other areas are floundering trying to get things done. Coming around the corner, we have explaining China's and India's reported differences over expanding BRICS. Here's the really thing, uh, important thing about BRICS. BRICS and BRICS Plus is going to add in Saudi Arabia and all of the other countries, Venezuela and South America. It's actually going to end up being 50% of the world's population is going to be able to be through the financial support of BRICS. China, however, 
it's kind of interesting. This article came from Andrew Corbio, and he is a Substack author, uh, a Russian Substack author. I don't agree with everything that he does, but he does have a interesting perspective on things. Bricks, uh, and then you have the um, Bricks and Roads Initiative, which is the BRI from China. China is really kind of wanting to do a mold into BRICS and the BRI and really kind of really take a BRICS and Roads uh, initiative and try to get this even more leveraged so they can have even more control. This is kind of frightening when you take a, an aspect of uh, financial implications of China merging this with the bricks and road initiative as well as bricks for the new financial structures uh the u.s dollar is really going to get uh side swiped and pushed off to the side one um bricks plus could be a mutually beneficial compromise. Uh, this is an interesting part here. While it can't be discounted that China and India might agree on one or two countries joining as an official member, which Bloomberg's report claims that the other three wouldn't be opposed in principle. This compromise would be prevent Sindo, uh, Sino-Indo tensions from uh, impending the gro group's growth. Delhi's interest would be served by establishing criteria for official membership, whatever the details thereof. So China is really wanting to combine it and get more people in it and really get the contract signed. India is trying to play a little more closer to their vest and a little more uh, poker related, if you would, and try to develop it out. Uh, in this stance, I'm in line with uh, the Indian uh, governments. Now, Russia is courting big time all of the African countries and just taking it to the next level. That's for a whole nother discussion. Got to visit on this one. Coming around the corner, um, fishermen activists protest offshore wind farms near Monotic, um, where recent whale deaths have occurred. This is offshore wind farms, and the coalition organized by the Committee for Constructive Tomorrow sent out three boats to South Fork Wind Farm, roughly 20 miles from Martha's Vineyard. Since offshore wind operations in 2016, the number of whales washing up on the beach is just phenomenal. The group's president, Craig Rucker, told the Post, their motto is like, damn the whales, full steam ahead. Kind of like Michael uh, Tanner, and I'm kind of having fun at his expense since he's not here. Um, they're fishermen, and it's right in the migratory path of uh, uh, fish, whales, and they're just, it's one thing if you're over here saying, let's save the planet, but you're not caring about the animals. But yet when you're talking about a fossil fuel, uh, a well, uh, the amount of holding up for a lizard that there are millions and millions of lizards um, is okay uh, on a holding up a gas or oil well. But when we get, we're talking about whales, some of the most important animals on the planet, the eagles, some of the most important animals they are part of the cycle of life and not a lizard. This is just nuts. I'm all about all forms of energy, but let's take care of the planet. And it seems like not everybody's wanting to do that. So in order, here's the oxymoron part of this, not Mormon, moron. Um, and that is U.S. must double LNG exports to cut emissions, reduce global coal use. Here's part of the problem here, permitting. We can't get any more nice facilities to be built because of the permitting process. We can't go to carbon net zero without increasing LNG. We can't even connect renewable to the grid without permitting. We can't get anywhere, and it's because of the political 
nonsense going on with the Biden administration's EPA. If you want to have a clean environment, fix the permitting. Take a look at Texas, follow Texas. So with that, subscribe, like, call your congressman, call me, reach out to me. If you are a renewable energy expert, if you're a battery storage, if you are a oil and gas executive, I want to talk to you. Let's solve the energy crisis and energy poverty for all, and let's have some fun eliminate energy poverty and quit printing money thanks and with that we'll see you on tomorrow thanks appreciate your time